I know what hides under your bed every night, children. It's Chainsaw Luigi. Hush, little baby, don't say a word. Luigi's gonna saw your legs off. <laughs> was that a Halloween intro? Yes, it was. Daddy Caddy doesn't make mistakes on the internet. So why am I talking about a spooky game in November, which is so clearly not the month of terror? <laughs> well, because this game came out on Halloween and I couldn't get a video like this done on the same day it came out. I mean, who do you think I am? Mark's pliers. So just before the Halloween chills finally leave us and open the doors ready for Christmas, I think we can fit one more review in here as I dive into Luigi's Mansion 3. Oh, perfect. This is exactly what happens when you make a YouTube video about a spooky game in the wrong month. Everything breaks. Karis, do you mind fixing that up quickly? Thanks! Hey guys, welcome to my house. Wanna play some Slenderman? Or... Layers of... Far? No thanks, I wanna play Ouija. Yeah, plumbers make mansion... Six. I couldn't tell you how happy I was that a third game in one of Nintendo's most bold and unique franchises was coming out. I was so happy that I told Nintendo personally over email, and then they invited me over to their UK headquarters to check out the game early a few months back. By the way, you see this box here? This was also lovingly sent to me by Nintendo as well, along with a review copy of the game itself, so thank you so much for that. But in this box, we have, well, first of all, this incredible shirt that I'll be wearing in this video, so thank you. This amazing hat, I mean, you gotta love it, and the these amazing pumpkin carving stencils, which are useless right now, but I shall be using them next year. And this hold up Luigi's moustache, which I use as a wooden spoon. It's a me, a Gordon Ramsay! Weirdly enough though, in this box, they also sent me another switch. <laughs> I, I have three now. I have more Nintendo switches than arms. Oh, I forgot about that one! What's going on in this game then? Peach, Mario, Luigi and three toads have been invited to a giant holiday inn called The Last Resort. <coughs> We're all having a fun time during the long trip on the bus and then- <coughs> Oh my god! Ghost dog! Ghost dog! Da 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 da! Da da da! Da da da! da, da. Here we go then, off on our jolly hollies to a building that looks a lot like the Tower of Terror. Oh wait, maybe that was the point. And I mean, well, it's nice and all, there's a lot to see, absolutely, but there's nothing really to do, so perhaps we should just go to the reception. Oh lordy, that is not a face I was ready for. Am I ready to check in? Well, no actually, not only because I need to clean up after what I just saw, but I'm a little too distracted by your employees dry humping the desk. Now you may all be wondering, why on earth would we go on holiday to a resort that looks like this after five minutes? And, well, that's because a lady called Helen Gravely invited us all down. Out of the goodness of her heart. With no ulterior motives whatsoever. Ah, God damn it, stop! So I guess it's time to go to bed, eh? I'm sure everything will be A-OK -okay and nothing at all will go wrong. Night night. Night night. Okay, that was precious. Oh, would you look at that? Everything went wrong. Now the room is filled with spooky decorations and dressing table jump scares for some reason. I can't handle this. I think I'm gonna go and hide in the bathroom. <laughs> oh, what? No! Not the toilet too! But what if I need a wee? It'll grab it! So as it turns out, big shocker, King Boo actually invited us the entire time. And now he has all of our heroes in the same location. Oh D, he's got them all stuck in portraits. We better run away before he captures us too. Uh, hang on, wait, is that- is that Pennywise? Blah 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 blah, find the poltergust vacuum, fight your way through angry ghosts, Mario is missing three, don't ever brush your teeth again because ghosts like to shove the brushes up there. It's all pretty by the numbers, but how is the game to actually play? Well if you're asking me, it's basically the same as the other two, but with way more bells and whistles attached to make it not only the most enjoyable, but most brain-scratching Luigi's Mansion to play so far in terms of puzzles. For the most part, you run around haunted locations, look inside cracks and broken walls for clues on how to get into other rooms, use your flashlight to stun enemies and reveal hidden ghosts that all have many different puzzles to solve in order to get them to appear, or to stun them ready to be captured. Oh, and you steal a ridiculous amount of money creatively hidden in every possible place you could imagine. I'd call Luigi a dirty rotten thief for doing this, but honestly, the entire hotel isn't only out to kill him, 
him, but he's also cleaning up every room as he goes around the hotel, so I think he deserves some compensation. Your vacuum by default can suck and blow. Stop it. Which then allows you to solve many of the puzzles in each and every room of the utterly gigantic hotel, and the vacuum even allows you to pick up and fire projectiles on the odd occasion. But you'll mostly just be sucking, because as we all know, Luigi is the king of suck. The flashlight that you charge up in order to stun ghosts is back, and that's not all it can do. It can activate light switches and disintegrate rats. <laughs> It is a bit weird how you can freely move Luigi with the left analog stick, yet the flashlight and vacuum aiming on the right stick is tank controlled, but once you get the hang of it, it's totally fine. Just remember, please remember, that most of the main moves Luigi can do with the vacuum and flashlight can be activated with all the triggers, which is 10 times easier than using the face button since you can still aim with your thumb while using the triggers. Since the original game, Luigi has thankfully got over his habit of molesting every bit of furniture to find hidden items and ghosts, but now he has a new disgusting pastime. Farting so hard that China pots break apart. Weird implications aside though, this is a move I massively love. It works great in most situations as an AoE explosion attack to blow up all surrounding interactable objects for money, and even works as a great pushback attack during ghost hunts to disrupt their attacks, defend yourself, or even jump over hazards when timed just right. And this isn't the only aggressive move Luigi has. Please don't piss off Luigi. Oh. <laughs> you also get this new slam move. After successfully grabbing a ghost in the vacuum for long enough, you get the chance to physically murder them more than they already have been. And this not only knocks down their health a lot more, but also breaks objects you aim the slam towards, knocks down the health of other ghosts that you slam that ghost into, disrupts their attacks, and stuns them without the flashlight ready for a vacuuming combo. And this makes the classic ghost vacuuming gameplay the series is best known for easily the best so far. It's not only the most strategic and multi-purpose, but so much more satisfying for for a third game in, instead of you just running around and sucking up the ghosts in the exact same way after you stun them. Not to mention, like in the second game, the money this time still has a use. It's not just to improve your rank after you de-haunt the building, you can actually buy a multitude of different things to help you out. Okay, well, three different things. A couple of revival bones in case you game over, the location of one boo projected onto your map, and the location of one gem projected onto your map. This is, well, fine enough, I suppose, but you know what Luigi's Mansion 2 had? Upgrades for the Poltergust, and they are nowhere to be seen here. No health upgrades, stronger slam attacks, nothing. Just extra lives and locations for hidden extra content. Especially disappointing since this extra hidden content rewards you with nothing at all. I mean, come on, that really sucks. <laughs> Yeah, you get a new coloured skin for one of your gadgets and a new flashlight, but that's it. No hidden ending or anything. <laughs> I mean, sure, you can improve your ranking for the hotel at the end, like in the other games, but I mean, that was the least I was expecting, because that was a feature from two games ago. The lucky thing, at least, is that finding the hidden gems and finding the money to buy the things needed to find the hidden gems, mechanically, is very fun to do. Most, if not all, the objects in each room are interactable in some way, and finding a dump truck of money as a payoff for exploring feels good, to put it simply. As is solving an obscure puzzle accidentally and getting a shiny rare gem from it, Rewards may be lacklustre, but completing for the sake of completing can be quite fun. It also feels good that within 45 minutes of playing, you'll be a thousand air. There's so much money in this game. Just make sure you search through every single bit of rubbish, set of drawers, cupboard, ripped wallpaper, folded up clothes, and box of tools. Ah! Owls. By the way, whoever came up with the idea to go back to Egad's lab at any time to buy stuff and then carry on with exploring at the exact same position you were in earlier deserves a raise. This was so helpful. In fact, no. You should be the head of Nintendo. Yeah. Take over from... Doug... Waluigi. Oh yeah, I totally forgot. Egad is indeed back, the inventor of the poltergust that you're using to capture the ghosts. And after you rescue him within the first hour of the game, that's when things really kick off. You not only rescue him with a gadget that allows you to bring back to life dead paintings, and allows you to track ghosts that are escaping from you, and reveals objects that exist in mirrors but not in reality, and reveals invisible objects and doors that look like they should be there but aren't, but at that point you also get the quest to save the rest of your friends by searching every floor of the hotel and by defeating boss ghosts that have stolen the elevator buttons giving you access to said floors. This means, amazingly enough, this game takes a direction much more similar to the original Luigi's Mansion, which I massively prefer over the second one. There's exploration and backtracking through older floors and rooms that you go into, all to find hidden money and extra ghosts. Well, not entirely. I mean, it's still mostly a linear adventure and each floor basically acts as an individual stage that you may or may not have to return to, the only thing tempting you to go back being all the hidden stuff. But each floor does offer a much more 
more interesting explorative vibe as you dart back and forth between rooms finding keys to unlock more doors, only with a few times it feeling like a straight one-way trek. Sometimes you'll be going back to where you were earlier, and sometimes you won't be. It's kind of a mix of Luigi's Mansion 1 and 2, and it gets the balance pretty good. I mean, at the very least, does it feel anything like the Super Mario Bros. stage selection from the second game? No! On top of all of this, you get even more to play with, like the new suction cup system, which allows you to stick your own plunger onto objects and walls and pull against a suckable bit of rope. This is sounding more and more like something Wario would film in his bedroom. This mechanic is equally great fun to experiment with and is multi-purpose. It's great for a last minute bit of self-defense, but also great for pulling away reflective armor ghosts wear when your flashlight doesn't stun them, and also makes its way into puzzles and exploration a lot as you clear suitcases out of your way and pull things towards you that wouldn't usually be able to be pulled. You can also do the slam move with smaller objects too, and it totally wrecks the room. You look me in my slippery old eye and tell me that this doesn't look exciting. Combine all of this with the classic Luigi's Mansion staple mechanics like using mirrors to find hidden objects and switches with the fixed camera angle, and you not only have the most capable Luigi so far, but also the most attractive. Throw me like one of your French girls. <laughs> and speaking of attractive, here's Gooigi. <laughs> This monstrosity is Luigi's helpful clone for this game, and he's the scariest thing Nintendo have ever made, even taking over thwomps in Mario 64. He turns to stiff rubber whenever he remains still, he slots through walls like the T-1000, he sounds like this, and the way that the real Luigi goes into a coma-like trance whenever Gooigi takes over hints at something much more sinister going on. Wait a second, Gooigi, what? What are you doing? Where are you going? My data! It's everywhere for the world to see! No! I need to protect it from this man! What am I gonna do? Well, just this. ExpressVPN are the very kind sponsors of today's video, but what does VPN stand for? Violet Pants. Nom nom nom. Did you realize that can harvest your data, sell it to advertisers, and in some countries, keep logs of your private conversations? Well, that's only one of the things ExpressVPN completely stops for you once you sign up, choose a server location, and hit this button. I mean, it's not rated number one on tons of sites for nothing. It protects your usernames, passwords, and bank details wherever you are, even with all the times you choose to game online, like I do all the time with my friends I don't pay to play with me. With over 90 country locations for you to connect to, you could fool even the government with your exact location. That's how secure this is. And it often gives you faster ping times to make button delays with online gaming matches next to naught. But my favourite thing about it is something I used it for literally last week. You see, I'm going to be going to the States soon for some business, but the problem is, UK price comparison sites for flights are bloody terrible. So I decided to connect to a server in New York, go to USA flight sites, and that's where I managed to find flights that didn't even exist on UK servers and turned out to be much cheaper. All you need to do is go to the description below to expressvpn.com forward slash caddy and you can find out how to get three months for free. Trust me, I've been with them for months and months now, and I'm not turning back anytime soon. You won't regret it. The good thing about Gooigi, though, is that he's yet another additional mechanic to Luigi's already ridiculous arsenal, and provides for even more styles of puzzle and combat encounter whenever you choose to use him. Like I said before, he can fit through metal grates, slide inside pipes, fall through gaps in the floor, and can be used alongside Luigi if he's in the middle of using the blow or suck mode of his vacuum, meaning you can get an extra strong pull against your plungers, or give the other Luigi a chance to bugger off while the other holds a switch down. His total lack of health and melting away whenever he touches water also adds a lot of tension to those few moments where you need to rely on him to capture ghosts. Especially in the parts where the real Luigi is trapped or being attacked by something and you have to solve a puzzle or defeat an enemy under a strict time limit to save him. He can even be used as a decoy for other ghosts if you're feeling like a proper bastard. All of the Guigi stuff mixes together with everything else that sounds really disgusting to make not only the most difficult Luigi's Mansion game but equally one of the most challenging standard Nintendo single player modes in recent memory involving the universe of Mario. It's all totally fair mind you but with the amount of gadgets to play with, new moves and and Gooigi at your disposal, there's so many options for tackling any and all combat and puzzle situations that you'll often forget what you'll be able to do. And you're not completely overpowered because of the lack of a jump command and the fact that everything that you plan to do has a little bit of a wind up time. It's creative, it's engaging, and mechanically at least, it's the best of the trilogy in my eyes. Saying that though, when you're low on health, does the low health noise need to be so loud that every other noise in the game cowers under its weight? Did you know I'm low on health? 
I don't know if you noticed, it's very subtle! Oh, by the way, yeah, totally forgot to talk about the booze. I mean, they're certainly here in this video game. There's just not much to say about them other than that. They contribute to the terrible completion rewards, so what more can I say about them? Oh, I know, you can do this to them. <laughs> You know what the scariest thing in this game is, though? Luigi talks to Egad through a virtual boy. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Now, you need to come over here immediately. Come on. Don't be shy. Come and sit on my lap, wee willy Luigi. Because I need to tell you the main thing I don't like about you. So as far as Luigi himself goes, well, he's still the cowardly, lovable dork we all came to know in the original. And he's got the greatest strafing walk cycle ever put into a video game. But as far as the setup for the story goes, it's basically the first game all over again, even to the point of Luigi being invited to a haunted location only to have his friends get trapped. But somehow, it's even more abridged than your standard Mario plot, and it tells this story in a lot less mysterious and creepy way compared to the first Luigi's Mansion. I mean, the first Luigi's Mansion story isn't exactly Soma, but I mean, take the portraits for instance. Finding out that the missing Mario is stuck in one in the original game is actually used as a plot twist and is quite an unsettling revelation. You just kind of stumble into it while you're searching through these gothic, horrible, dirty, dank sewers and you're stuck behind a cage and everything just looks very unnatural. But here, within five minutes, the gang are already trapped and they're jingled around in your face like car keys. Every major cutscene usually involves something going ooh and then Luigi going wah and it tends to play more to its strengths in comedy more than atmosphere. And that's fine and everything, but I still play Luigi's Mansion for the sharp contrast in atmosphere to standard Mario. Not the silly slapstick and exuberant villains. I mean, even though I do love the villains in this game, they're all brilliantly characterized, it still feels more kid-friendly than the original and less concerned with being about a haunted location. The ghosts in this game are just what so happen to be the enemies more than being the entire center point to the spooky thrills that the first game and even the second game had. That's where those two games shined, in its atmosphere, in the visual design, in how everything worked together in this horrible gothic universe. I'm fully aware though that this is still a Mario game, so plot isn't what you should be going in for, but I will still prefer the atmosphere of the original, which in my opinion is what elevated it over its gameplay. And that sucks a bit because, like, Luigi's Mansion 3 does look fantastic in every sense of the word. I particularly enjoyed how Luigi gets scared totally rigid and changes his animations for a second whenever he gets jumped. And how about that bit where Egad is running behind you. That alone makes this a game of the year contender. Look at him. <laughs> Look at him. The grass in the gardens reacts to your vacuum perfectly. If you grab a pumpkin with your vacuum, then your flashlight shines through the carving and creates a projection. Toad can't follow you whatsoever and he likes to off himself. <laughs> It's all great stuff. The only issue I have with the visuals being the physics, I mean seriously, what the f*** is going on here? And here, with the most low poly and ugly trees and hills I think I've ever seen. I mean, good god, they look completely dreadful. <laughs> oh, that's why they sent me another Switch. The music is brilliant stuff too, since it changes the instrumentation and genre for every type of boss ghost that takes over each floor. And the sheer variety of Art Deco five-star hotel locations and maintenance areas areas makes every minute of this game a pleasant surprise. You never know what comes next, but this then comes at the cost of it not being as dark, foreboding, and properly spooky like the other two games, which made me love Luigi's Mansion in the first place. Again, the atmosphere went a long way with those games, and I think we've now totally lost it. But then, then I remembered the entirety of the Egyptian suites, and the way that you can blow away and suck up every grain of sand in specific places to create ramps or dig up treasure, and I'm blown away by all the level of detail in such a small part of the 12 hour adventure. Even slamming ghosts into the sand leaves accurate body shaped prints behind. The sand physics here didn't need to be this detailed, but they are. And stuff like this makes me totally forget everything I just said about the atmosphere. What was I saying anyway? Who am I? What are you doing in my house? I'm, I'm gonna call the FBI. The most important question of all though is this. Can you pet the ghost dog? That is better than petting my own dog. You aren't enough! And I don't recommend Luigi's Mansion 3 on that alone. Okay, maybe I do, but everything considered, taking the lack of atmosphere and disappointing completion rewards out of the way, this game brings the series back to a strong point and is way better than the second game for how it lets you get lost and explore in an abandoned and eerie building all over again. 
even if it's mostly brightly lit. I must stress as well, mechanically, it's by far and away the best Luigi's Mansion. It has creases that could be ironed out, but it does a lot more with its premise as a sequel than the second game ever did, almost to the point of this feeling more like a true Luigi's Mansion 2. Plus, there were far too many moments that I just loved while playing this game. I loved the King Ghost boss where the only way to stun him was to joust with him and wait for him to charge right into you like a real jousting match. I loved all the blowing into musical instruments you could do in the music halls. I loved activating the chainsaw in the botanical gardens and shredding up every single thing in the room. I loved that part in the museum where I was thinking about how the hell I was supposed to smash these glass cabinets because there wasn't anything around and then I couldn't find anything after finishing the area. But then I gasped in delight as I realised I could pick up Toad and launch his gross fungus head into the glass and break it that way. I loved that bit where one of the boss ghosts doesn't turn out to be a boss at all, he just wants to make a good movie, so films you having a Godzilla battle with another ghost while you both stomp around and annihilate an entire model city. But then you're feeling like a bit of a Johnny, so you follow the director back into the editing room, suck him up even though he's innocent, and get an achievement for it. I was caught off guard so many times, I was able to look past a lot of my personal preferences towards the original game. And there's so many more surprising and downright creative and brilliant moments like that, which I won't spoil here. Not just for how they look, but how they mechanically work and how the puzzles are solved within those moments. Once again, in terms of pure content, depth of gameplay, and charming levels of detail and character, Luigi's Mansion 3 is easily the best one. Judging it if you're going through the campaign, and not bothering with all the side stuff and completion at least. That stuff still sucks. Or blows. Whatever setting you like best. You can even play the campaign in co-op, and there's a few extra mini-games that you can play in multiplayer mode. But we're not going to talk about them because we're grown adults playing Nintendo games. Nobody wants to play with us. Anyway, I think that Death Stranding is next on the agenda, so can't wait to see how terrible or brilliant that game is. But if I'm going to be sitting on this sofa for about 120 hours, walking in a straight line, the house is going to need to be clean before I do that. Don't want to get any rats. <sighs> All right, let's do this. Hello once again everybody, thank you so much for watching this video until the very end. The bloopers and the outtakes will be on at the very, very, very end, so please stay tuned for that. But first of all, I just want to thank every single person on the screen right now that has supported this channel via Patreon. Thank you, thank you so much, you have no idea how much you help the channel out. If you want to check it out, it's in the description below, along with my Twitter and my Instagram, which I am on constantly, updating everybody about everything I'm doing, where I am, what's going on, random jokes that come up in my head stupid stuff that happens all that stuff is in the description below that's where you'll see me active most on social media but before the outtakes come on thank you again for listening and special special thank you to the top tier patreon supporters for this month basil mitchell reed ad thornton smith nightshade 96 md the dude exopaz matthew hubble daniel larosa gtfo brikachu matthew o'donnell tiredest type 40 caleb sanders red-eyed critic fart rules doom guy luke jones Brandon Butler Williams, J Man Crew, The Game Shed, Maiden of Ravens, Anders Andal, Mr. Peachy, and X Shadow Hunter ZX. Thank you so much, every single one of you amazing people. One, two, three, four, five. It's a me! Oh shit! Okay. Now. You. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> okay. Now. <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong? <laughs> By the way, you see this box here? This was very l l this is my coffin because I can't remember the- If you're asking me, it's basically the same as my claw hands, I couldn't lift the games up. This means, amazingly enough, this game takes a direct- And this isn't the only aggressive move that Luigi- The, the Louis- the Louise Luby Lou. And this isn't the only lo lewd- <laughs> Lube. This isn't this isn't the only lewd Luigi pick. <laughs> this is gonna be the most disgusting thing I've ever done. Yeah. Oh. oh. Three at one. Oh, if I Oh. It tastes like what I think the bottom of a bin would taste like. <laughs> no, Stan. Oh no. No. Go away. Go away. Go away. Whoa. Stan, no. Oh, whoa. <laughs> Stan.
that maybe you can have a bit after. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, okay. <laughs>